Trashomaniacs. Welcome back to the Geo Gearheads episode two, 429. Wow, I'm having problems with my voice and with reading. I'm Daryl W4, back as usual with Chris of the Northwest. Oh, Daryl, you sound terrible. So let me do some talking. You just sit there and be screen candy. Oh, that's not a good sign. I'm, I'm never saying that one again. That, that sounded better in my head. But tonight, don't worry, we're not alone. We've got a great guest. We've got on a boat with us tonight. How are you doing on a, uh, are you on a boat? I am not currently on a boat. I'm currently in my basement. How but are you, you guys doing? Are on a boat. <laughs> I am on a boat. Yes. <laughs> now think about that. That's kind of a, you know, uh, uh, Oh, what's the name of that movie with the dream inside of a dream in inception. Inception. There you go. I was saying incursion and I knew that wasn't right. Ooh, okay. <laughs> that is terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's a bad one. Well, on a boat, thank you for being with us. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is one of the randomized See, shows. Okay, I think I think Limax has the right idea for you though. Is you need to take your basement, Ooh. turn it into one of those little pools, <laughs> kind of like they have for the uh, filming, and then have your boat in the pool there. I'll uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. I uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it in mind. There next show, and then next time, and then you don't have to worry about your uh, basement flooding either. Yeah, it's already done. <laughs> no, I'm in my basement. And I definitely don't want water. I'm just starting off with that. Okay. Doesn't have anything to do with boats. I just don't want water in my basement. <laughs> or everything becomes a boat. <laughs> Ooh. And that's not good. Hey, this is a randomized show. It's one of my favorite topics where we just get to talk about a whole bunch of little things. And um, so tonight I'm going to start off with an email from... I'm going to go with Coors Gat. It could be Coors Scat. I don't know. Coors Gat. Uh, sent an email. I listened to show 428 right now and heard that you might be doing logging from a GSAC on a later show. I have used logging for a long time, but, but I have stopped doing so now since GSAC has been a little slow when adding pictures to the log, and I do that a lot. Uh, now I use... Uh, Cashtour.no is my logging tool since it has a lot of the features that GSAC has for logging, along with the speed of getting pictures into the logs. As I tend to be late on some of my logging, I have the opportunity to compose and execute the logging from almost any computer. Of course, this needs to be an online connection for composing as well. But for me, it's well worth avoiding the frustration I have experienced with my pictures. Uh, cashtour.no can make trackables in your inventory, visit the caches, but not retrieve or drop. There's also some codes in the logs that uh, cashtour.no will recognize, will not recognize, but some are built in for the logging tool. And others, and, and there are uh, some, wait, I lost my place because I scrolled while I was reading. Rookie mistake. Okay, he goes on to say there are other possibilities to create several templates for the logging, something for the specific cache and the possibility to make batch logging for those power trails just as easy and to be able to add some specific logs once uh, much more easy than I've seen with GSAC. As for adding pictures in Cache Turno, you might need to upload pictures for the logs in a batch and cachetour.no will try to sort them based on the timestamp or the coordinates that are taken, making it much more user-friendly than GSAC for that part. And as you have uploaded them to cashtour.no in a batch, you do not have to have them uploaded from your machine when the logs are submitted. They will be taken from the Cache Tour website and posted on geocaching.com. Now, I still use GSAC for a lot of things and will as long as it's functioning. Um, but for logging, I have stopped since I found a way that works better for me with cashtour.no. So there you go. A little bit of a, a description, but you know what? I had never used GSAC for logging. That's just not the way I do it. Uh, for me, um, 
uh, Cashly. Sorry, yeah. I was saying Cash Tour all this time, and that got stuck in my head. Um, <laughs> Cashly just works so well with the templates that you can create. So, yes, I, I like using uh, Cashly, but uh, one of the things that people do is Cashly with uh, GSAC because you can put the stuff in GSAC. You know, from uh, you know, export your uh, um, field notes. Mm-hmm. And import that into GSEC. So it, you know, it's a nice combination if that's what you want to do. But at this point, I'm trying to get away from using a computer. So things like Cash Tour and uh, um, why can I not remember Project GC are nice because they aren't software that you run on a computer. It's the stuff that runs in the cloud. Mm-hmm. Now. Uh- Limax says he uses a pen for logging. I do use that as well. Yeah, that's that's in the field logging. That could be different than your uh, logging online. Um, and GSM times two. Oh, oh go ahead. It says <laughs> uh, Chris and I are wearing the same shirt, so there we go. I was um, going to pick the one that said that uh, GS, from GSM times two that says that tick magnet should do a show on uh, or lo- a lesson on uh, logging with uh, Cash Tour. So I, yep. I like that idea too. I think that's fantastic. I mean, the way he just described it there, you know, to be honest, I didn't know you could upload pictures along with your logs and it would sort them either by time or location and put them in the right log. I mean, that's fantastic. All right. And Limax also says, does using a new iPad Pro count as not using a computer? Any iPad counts as not using a computer. Exactly. It's about the OS. Yeah. And GSAC is Windows only. So mm-hmm. technically, it's not even just a computer. It has to be a Windows computer. And it won't run on things like Windows S. Now, as many of you guys know, I am in IT, and we've been doing the uh, work from home thing and asking people to bring in their own laptops. Mm-hmm. I was amazed how many of those came in with Windows S. And of course, nothing we use works on Windows S. So, you know, it's like, sorry, you might as well have had a Mac. Wow. <laughs> hey, and, and I, I say that with all kinds of love because I am a Mac user, including right. at work. But most of the uh, call center stuff will not run on Macs. It's Windows only. That That is changing. It's going to take a few years, but it is changing because they see the uh, writing on the wall, too. And they're getting rid of all of those Microsoft Tappy protocol problems that they've uh, created for themselves but we should move on because as uh ryan uh, that's shaved ewok right no it's uh semmel's uh, Semmel. okay sorry i'm getting my uh caching names to uh <laughs> it, it, it you know so many people it, yeah well it, it's so many scrolling by and i'm just getting all confused but let me guess we'll talk about corona tonight which we're gonna have to yeah we don't and have a choice, do we? This this is not the type of corona that you know you were thinking of because we actually had two cases of corona diagnosed across the street in two different buildings from where I work. And I, I was just going, well, they went to TGI Fridays right around the corner and got mm-hmm. corona. What's the big deal? We're not talking the beer. No, and then that's when people explain to me it's, you know. <laughs> No, joking aside, we we've been, you know, sent home partially because we have literally two cases diagnosed across the street from us. Fortunately, it's not in my complex, which is rather large. Yeah, I've <clears throat> got the luxury of working from home, so I've been doing that. In fact, let's see. I think I've only gone out twice this week. So, uh, yeah, I've been at work every day this week. Tomorrow gets to be my first work from home. Okay. I have helped a lot of people get work from home set up. Yeah, I I imagine, because that's like what IT is all about. Yeah, exactly. And I I do love some of the memes going around. Yeah. But it it was predefined that we were going to talk about this tonight, because Tick Magnet emailed us back on February 25th Hmm. asking about it. So you want to get into that email? I'll read that email. Tick Magnet starts off saying, hi, guys, with all the news about coronavirus, I'm starting to get a little concerned. 
What do you think will be the impact on this year's mega events, especially the HQ 20th anniversary special Angia Woodstock, where we'll have thousands of people from all over the world in one place, all wanting to greet each other. I hope the, the virus is short lived and under control by then. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts. And um, I've been collecting articles on this ever yes, since. Have. <laughs> so we, we do have a list of articles that we want to run through. Uh, <clears throat> and this is also one of the reasons why we've asked on a boat, because he's an organizer of one of the mega events that I'm hoping to go to as kind of the replacement for going out to uh, Washington now. And especially with Washington being a hotbed. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look very good, but it is you know, far enough out. We're not going to say it, it. it's true. We still have people here doing events. The events are now outside since all of our restaurants and bars and coffee shops are closed. Um, so, you know, if you get 10 people together in a park, you can still have an event. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm a little surprised they haven't allowed at least temporarily the virtual events though. Oh, interesting. Well, and that's, that's like, just a we're doing rabbit hole to climb down. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that would be the way to go is, you know, do like a, uh, a Zoom event or a, a Skype or Teams, whatever. And then you get around this for the time being and just do it as like, a, okay, especially if this is going to hold out through May, which hopefully it's not. Right. But, you know, come May, we want to hold all of those uh, right uh, events for the uh, community celebration. Daryl, you know, it'd be hilarious is this everybody met in a parking lot. They stayed in their cars and then they got on like a group Skype to have the event. You have to be there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be crazy. All right. So <laughs> some of the some of the articles that I've collected was uh, um, COVID-19 coronavirus impact on Apple's iPhone, uh, Mac and WWDC. We've already seen some of the fallout from that one. Uh, but that was one of the early ones, which came right before uh, Southwest or South by Southwest uh, 2020 being canceled. Niantic actually canceled uh, Pokemon Go and Wizard Unite Community Days. And they also uh, uh, killed the Safari Zone in St. Louis. So there's a lot of stuff that's being uh, canceled. Uh, Verge actually went and collected everything that they could and this is an older article now on uh, everything canceled by the coronavirus tech industry and beyond apple actually announced that wwdc their big developer conference would be digital only while <clears throat> while google yeah it, it this all makes sense because at this point you don't want to encourage anything you want to plan on this safe side and a lot of these events probably would be better off digital than anything else. One of the reasons I think that WWDC tends to be a physical event is because they want to keep things under wraps. There's some stuff that's public, but for the most part, they want to control what gets out. Oh, and <clears throat> White Coaster also says that Ingress uh, for Saturday is canceled for April. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and then Google indefinitely delayed the uh, Digital Next conference, and it will be digital again this year. But on the brighter side, there's uh, information from uh, uh, Israel that is a little bit scary, but very cool at the same time. They're actually using cell phone tracking data to avoid the lockdowns. This is a really cool yeah. thing. They went into it. In uh, Daily Tech News uh, show today, or yesterday, what they're doing is tracking and correlating the data from your cell phones, mm -hmm. your location information, so they can see, okay, you came into contact with these people. Mm -hmm. So when one person is uh, contaminated, whether they contract it or not, they get quarantined. So they're doing quarantining based on your location data, because you came into contact with these people, you might be susceptible, and they're avoiding the lockdown. Interesting. Wow. That's, um, 
But look at all the personal data. But that's scary that they're getting into your phone and tracking you that way. Well, exactly. And I, I think it's a good thing in this case, but it's a scary precedence. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Same with, um, you know, just government shutting down businesses, you know, restaurants and that, that is a, that is a dangerous precedent to set. Yeah. yeah. Now, and it's devastating to I, the economy. In this case, yes. Do I still think it's dangerous? Of course I do. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I think I, 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 as much as I hate this, I think it's something that we should explore. I don't know that we really have the time to do it now because we have the crisis that's already hit, but if we can come up with a good way to do this in the future, it means we could kill a lot of the negative effects on the economy as well. And that's what, you know, short term, yes, we're all worried about the health effects, but long term, this is going to affect the economy worldwide. Right. right. So <clears throat> we need better ways to handle it in the future. And I think this could be one of them. Well, and so talking about the economy worldwide, we know that Amazon is prioritizing uh, home or household deliveries over business deliveries. I saw a segment on the news this morning, you know, that business owners are having trouble getting enough supplies in to keep their workers working because, you know, they order from Amazon and Amazon's focusing on other things. So it creates that problem. You know, local uh, restaurants are now doing pickup, some doing delivery as well. Um, you know, go support your local restaurants, people. They are struggling. And, and those are the people you know, that we want to help us and to keep this economy going. So geocaching wise, we had the announcement from uh, uh, HQ about the community first. Let me read a a section of that, Daryl. Absolutely. While you rest your voice. Um, There's a long blog post. I'm just going to pull out a couple of sentences here. In some regions, community volunteer reviewers may suspend publishing new events and or may be able or may disable retract or archive already published events in accordance with guidance from health authorities. So I think that's the key that we need to look at here. Um, Local reviewers can, you know, not they not only not publish upcoming events, but they may be able to disable or retract already published events. Right. Which, which is well warranted. So, uh, and wet coaster uh, sent us, Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm not, I'm not letting you talk. I'm going to ask on a boat what he thinks of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I love the idea. Um, I, I really like the fact that they're kind of uh, leaving it up to people in the local areas. Right. So the reviewers being local, um, them being able to get together. Um, I know you're about to talk about wet coaster here. We can kind of talk more about that. Uh, we're seeing some of the same stuff here in Ohio. Um, but I, I'm hearing a lot about uh, reviewers in local areas working together, like in a state where they have four reviewers and they get together and they make an educated decision based on the guidance they're getting uh, and what they're seeing in their state. Um, I think that's a, that's a great response from, from HQ personally. Yeah. So. And, you know, so let's say West Virginia, which I think still only has one case. Maybe so, two now. Maybe two. Okay. Still minor compared to say Washington state, right? Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps you can have an outdoor event, you know, don't go indoors. I don't know what, uh, West Virginia, I don't know what Ohio is doing for that matter. I mean, are there, your restaurants still open for dine-in? No, uh, no, everything's takeout only right now. I just grabbed dinner tonight and it was uh, takeout and drive through only. Yeah. Um, so all the, all the seating areas are closed. Uh, I, I personally had an event that was scheduled for yesterday. Uh, there's another one today, uh, right mm-hmm. in my town here that we had to actually move out of the restaurant and then mm-hmm. a pavilion in the park. Okay. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that here too. Yeah. Um, uh, I just on a side note, we have, uh, uh, an event host here who does a lot of events and they scheduled a couple, you know, this was last year, uh, for a restaurant on a day they were closed. So they ended up holding the event in the parking lot anyway. So I thought, well, there you go. Let's just do parking lot events. It works well. We've, we've done it here. (laughs) So it was just funny. 
But yeah, White Coaster uh, did uh, write and let us know that uh, all of the events in Ontario, and that's Canada, have been suspended and no ones will be approved, and it includes CEDO. And he sent us the link for the uh, information about that, so we'll include that in the show notes. And at this point, uh, I think that's going to be the case throughout uh, most of uh, the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I think Canada is under similar um, right. lockdowns, not just based on that, but I seem to have uh, uh, caught a couple of little blips and I've, I've been living under a rock because of all of the Corona prep for work. I mean, seriously, it's been like 14 plus hour days, like f- f- since last Monday, I think. Jeez. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's crazy, but I, you know, I did see something, I think from like Vancouver that mm-hmm. they were uh, uh, getting similar, um, you know, shelter in place type orders now. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. I really feel that uh, Seattle, if not the state of Washington will be shelter in place by next week. Yeah. And in most cases you want to do it city by city, right? It's just easier. However, the whole problem, I, I was caught, a, uh, I wish I link to it but uh i want to say it was uh oh shoot it's something droid did a uh, very boring but good video about the similarities and differences between corona and uh, the spanish flu because it was the last similar pandemic mm-hmm. that we had and the big difference this time and why we're looking at such a uh, catastrophic uh, rate of uh, uh, infections is because of airlines and cheap travel, hmm. which we've never had before. So all it takes is for one person to go through a couple of airports, and we've had a few TSA agents now test positive for it. Right. Now, everyone who's been through those lines is potentially at risk. Hmm. Granted, it's not that dangerous so that you know, I think it was supposed to be the on average one in three people that uh, someone who is infected and contagious comes in contact with would actually get sick from it. Right. Or would actually contract and not even get sick. So it is not that bad, but think about how many people they hit. Right. You know, if one person goes through a hundred people, all of a sudden now you've got 30 people that are infected. Right. Right. So this is why it is so dangerous this time. And my fear is with the shutting down the cities, it might not be enough to stop the spread. You know, I I always go back to say America, Americans are a bunch of cowboys. You know, they want to do what they want to do. Yeah. Um, You know, there's still, uh, I'll throw out the, the, the millennials, I'll throw them under the bus or maybe the ambulance in this case. Um, they're still down on the beaches at spring break in Florida. I'm like people come on. Well, yes. and there's a lot of uh, concern over that too. Right. Oh, and, uh, my wife just texted me that, uh, they've closed the tunnel from Michigan to Canada as well. Our border has been closed here for a couple of days. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's one I didn't even catch. So, that through uh, through Windsor, yeah, or, yeah, into yeah. Windsor. So I don't know. She said the tunnel. I don't know if they've done the bridge as well. Hmm. It could be that they wanted to close the tunnel because it's a confined space. But that, I mean, it seems a little silly, but I get it. <laughs> so yeah. let me let me pop up some uh, comment here in the chat. So Ryan says I was just talking with the chamber and Colby. They took half of the tables out of a restaurant to help with social distancing. Uh, I've seen lines at fast food places around here where, you know, the line's like a mile and a half long, but there's a dozen people in it. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're social distancing. Um, Wet Coaster thinks British Columbia events have been shut down as well. I believe that's true. Um, Yes. uh, uh, Limax says, uh, you know, it's like the opening pages of the stand or, you know, the beginning of 12 monkeys. It does feel like we're in a movie. Uh, let's see. Roger says the whole point of social distancing is flattening the curve, you know, so we don't get as many people infected. And I 
definitely agree with that. Uh, Geocacher says, if we all do our part, we'll be okay, but so many are not doing what they need to do. Yeah. yeah well, and that's getting back to the kids partying at uh, the yeah. beaches in yeah. Florida. Tick Magnet says, I'm glad you're talking about this. Thanks. And uh, GSM Times 2 says, what's the status of Midwest Geobash? Uh, you know, we don't know. We, we don't have anybody here that can talk about it. So oh, wait. maybe we do know. <laughs> well, that, that's actually a good lead. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on is because you've got some exposure and you happen to know a few other people in the mega world. So, yeah. Why don't we turn it over for you to, or to you for a little while. <laughs> sure. Um, hey, one thing I did want to add, um, I, I believe it was uh, what coast that provided the link to the Ontario geocaching wiki. Um, that's a great resource for anybody to check out if they're looking for uh, updates. Um, I've looked at a few of the wiki pages and there's, there's a lot of that in there. So check out that in the show notes and uh, look at those wiki pages for any updates on uh, suspending events being published. Um, <clears throat> so I, I was taking a look at uh, a few of the mega events that are coming up. Um, I try to stay in the loop uh, for the most part as, as a mega host myself, I have a, I have a team. It's not just me personally with Midwest Geobash, but, uh, um, I try to stay in the loop and kind of keep up to date on what other mega events are doing and how it might impact us. And, um, uh, when I looked this morning, there were six upcoming mega events between now and May, um, including the beginning of May that have either been canceled or postponed uh to a later date uh date still to be determined on most of those uh there's four in europe two in the u.s and one in australia um and uh so as of right now uh the next currently scheduled mega event in the world is mingo madness uh which is currently scheduled for 5 2 2020 so may 2nd um, and then two weeks after that is the next one, which is Allegheny State Park Geobash in uh, Western New York on May the 16th. So um, I actually had the pleasure of knowing both uh, Semmels and uh, Devin C, um, two of the organizers from, from those two events. Um, I reached out to Ryan Semmel earlier today, um, and uh, it, his response was pretty much what I expected. Uh, uh, the folks at, at Mingo Madness says, uh, quote, we're staying in close contact with local officials, actively monitoring the situation, and uh, they'll provide more updates regarding Mingo Madness if and when they become available. Um, and basically the same thing came from Devin at ASP Geobash, another uh, May event. Um, he said, uh, so far, we're just outside the eight week guidelines from the CDC. Uh, New York State Parks and Ground Speak will make their decision if they have to make one. So it basically sounds like they're planning to have their event uh, as long as the, the parks and, and HQ will allow them to. Um, and I know both of those events have their stores open and uh, they're, they're planning as normal at, at the moment, um, barring anything crazy. So, I mean, um, it, it, Scott, uh, GSM times two, he asked about Midwest Geobash. Uh, we're kind of in the same boat. I mean, that, that event is all the way out at, at the end of July. Um, so as of right now, we got to kind of take it a week at a time. Uh, we're kind of paying attention to what other events are doing. We're paying attention to the news. Uh, our, our governor's on TV every day talking, talking in Ohio about what's, what's happening. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing that I have concerns with personally is um, uh, swag. Swag seems to be, it, it's kind of sticking out in my mind about um, when the right time to order things is. Um, I, I have concerns about events ordering things too soon and then all of a sudden they have to postpone or, or cancel and then that's a big chunk of money that's out the window. Um, and then the, the, conversely too, if, if we end up seeing any kind of production delays, um, I'm kind of worried about that too. So uh, that's kind of where my team and I have been talking over the past couple of weeks. We haven't, obviously we haven't made any decisions. Like I said, it's way too soon, but um, uh, I'm, I'm seeing in the chat here, Ryan says uh, their goal is to make an announcement on April 1st. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so um, that's good to hear. So, um, you know, one thing that I, I as, as a, a mega event um, organizer, one thing I'd like to you know say to you guys is when this all passes, um, 
I really hope that that everybody that's watching, everybody that's listening, everybody that's out cashing, um, consider going to a local mega event or, or a nearby mega event. Consider going out and patronizing them and supporting them for the work that they're doing. This is going to be a tough year for for everybody, um, and this year more than ever, everybody's going to need your support um, to make these events happen. So I know we talked about the economy and we talked about getting out, supporting your restaurants. It's the same thing with these with these mega events. So I I, I really hope that uh, and I know everybody's going to be stir crazy, right? Everybody's going to be stir crazy and going to want to get out of the house anyway. What better to do than to go to a mega event when we get the all clear finally, right? So, um, yeah. so hopefully hopefully it works out well. But yeah. well, and kind of along those notes, uh, Wet Coaster says that the uh, Ontario provincial parks are closed, which I'm hearing about a lot of them. Uh, Star Casher uh, says that the Michigan state parks and preserves will be free. No passport, which is the uh, payment to get in until the coronavirus situation improves so that people can get out of the house and hit the trails. I actually read something about the uh, national parks doing a fee free period as well to help with social distancing initiatives and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, yeah, I, I've heard I, some I, of them are shutting you know, down like the visitor centers. Yeah. But the, and I don't know if that was the national parks, but a lot of the parks are shutting down the visitor centers so that they can help with the social distancing, get rid of that spot that everyone goes to, yeah. but still get people out on the trails. Yep. And there's, there's been some mixed information about whether uh, getting out in the sun actually helps or not, but I figure it can't hurt. <laughs> it definitely helps your mental. It, exactly. Yeah. Help, so, Oh, but uh, Limax says that uh, Muir Woods is closed. I don't know where that is. <laughs> oh man. That's like one of the iconic national parks Ah, named for John Muir. Okay. Fair. All right. Anyway. Um, so, so. Well, I want, I want to get back to talking about mega events in the swag yeah, exactly. because you know, the majority of geo coins are made in China. Yeah. Right. And so this happened just um, right around Chinese new year, which is yeah. a time of year to get anything done in china it pretty much shuts down for about six weeks right and um so coming out of that you know um all production is slow anyway and now with this so you know if you order swag now for an event it may or may not make it on time which that really hurts because if you're saying doing a mega event and you don't have your coins at that time <laughs> you know people may may go ahead and pre-purchase knowing that you're going to have to ship them out, but that cuts into your profits. Yeah. Right. I mean, and the whole idea of selling coins is to help pay for the event. Um, and you know, it just, it just piles on so quickly that, um, you know, a mega event isn't a huge moneymaker. It's not a mega moneymaker. You know, the whole goal is to break even. I see what you did there with mega. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, quick break, because uh, uh, GSM Times 2 posted an interesting uh, tidbit. Uh, San Jose's medical order called going outside an essential activity and is exempt from the shelter-in-place orders. Hmm. That seems backwards. I like it. Yeah, it, it, well, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, you know, okay, I, I said I'm working from home and I'm right near a window. I can't tell you the number number of people that are outside everybody's walking kids are riding bikes you know schools mm -hmm. are closed and such so there's a lot of activity now they're not stopping and congregating but uh you know there's a lot of people outside moving no cars just people it's, that, that's it's interesting really kind of dystopian yeah it's kind of cool getting back to the uh, megas though um as for myself i'm not uh, uh going to be able to make uh the big events in Washington now for sure because of Corona. You know, I was still holding out some hope I could make everything work financially, but we've already been hit hard enough that I know I'm not going to be able to do it. Despite any other questions about whether we are going to be able to travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's enough of a hit that I can't do it. So I, uh, I have been planning on going to Midwest Geobash. I do that every year, and that's going to become my big event this year, which is kind of sad, but hey, now. It, 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 it's a great <laughs> event, but it's the one I go to every year. Yeah, you know, I always want to do, I, I usually don't get as much, but I want to do one trip 
every year for a mega event. And, you know, because Midwest Geo Bash is in my backyard, it's kind of de facto and it doesn't really count. So that's how I feel. <laughs> I, I was really excited. Well, except that you have to deal with it. You're, you're probably anxious to get it over with so you don't have to deal with the planning until, <laughs> you know, a couple of months later. Uh, but, but no, I was really excited when you guys announced that you, uh, you were going to have the uh, 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 GPS maze this year because mm. that gave me that little bit more that i could count on in a little bit uh it's the only reason you're coming right n- no no <laughs> Daryl, do you it, not have that icon no i have that icon but the wife doesn't oh ah. so it gave me that much more uh solace that I'm not, yeah you know, if i couldn't make it out to uh, uh washington that i could at least get her another new icon mm-hmm. yeah you know because i've been to uh the original stash i've been to the ape cache you know i've done the uh, triad so it's not that big for me but it was big for her because she has not done it so she has not done a gps maze because they retired those before she had the chance to do it so that's big for her and i'm still excited about the location list which i'm also going to get at midwest geo bash so i'm in pretty good shape you know, I'll have uh, everything but that one big community icon, and it, I got that one the first time around. The uh, Lost and Found events, the community celebration. You have a block party? Yeah, the, the first block party, which wasn't a block the, party. The 10-year one. Right, the and I did pad. not yeah. get I did not get the uh, uh, block party afterward, and I thought I had one. So I'm kind of disappointed that I never got a block party. Five years, allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. wait five more years and you can get another chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, and that's the thing. I, I'm less heartbroken about not being able to make it out to the 20 year event because we are going to have other opportunities to do most of that and we can get mm-hmm. most of the icons that we want from other events. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm counting on Midwest Geobash to make it this year. <laughs> you and me both. That's, that's I figure plan. it's kind of out in the middle of uh, nowhere. Yeah. And has a better chance of Survival. making it, yeah. yeah, making it around some of the uh, shelter in place orders. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. that said, it does make me a little nervous about going if we've got people who uh, decided to go party on the beach in uh, Fort Lauderdale and fly up and do Midwest Geobash the next day. Yeah. The, or, you know, make take a cruise or something. You're right. The, the honestly the biggest thing that um, that we were kind of talking about as a group our, our team the biggest concern that we have is if, um, if we rent the county fairgrounds right and so if the fairgrounds say we're closed you can't you can't be here um, that would be the biggest the biggest issue and I, I really foresee that being the only thing that would really um, kind of make the decision happen. You know what I mean? To postpone or cancel or whatever. Well, and if there's, um, it is a county fairground. So it's if there's a county wide health exactly. order or something, it could happen. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's really the only thing that we're, we're you know, hoping and praying doesn't happen at this point. But um, do you have a backup plan? Yeah. <laughs> we, we've, no, uh, not, not, not really another location. We, we kind of, we talked a little bit about it as a team. Um, you know, obviously we would still probably have it at the same location. It's just a matter of, um, could we possibly do it a, a different weekend? Um, if the, if there was availability there, um, the problem is it's a, it's a camping event, right? So, um, anytime that's not in the summer, it, it, you start really cutting in the good weather for camping. So, um, who knows? Well, on the I other mean, part of it too, you know, in a different venue or different event venue, if there is a shelter in place order or some kind of barring of that, you don't want to go around it and try to do it somewhere else because you're going to be making the situation worse anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, you know, like I was saying, like it's it, a couple months away. I, I think we kind of left it with the team is um, we're going to talk in early, probably the beginning of May and kind of see where we're at end of April being in May, see where we're at and make a decision at that point. Um, I, you know, fingers crossed this, this starts getting better before it gets worse, obviously. Um, and kind of, kind of take it from there. So I, 
at this point I'm, I'm really just hoping I had a whole, I had all these travel plans this year. I was kind of like you, Daryl, I, I wanted to get out and do things and whatever. I'm, um, I'm really just hoping for the best for the, for the events that, uh, that did postpone, right. I hope that their, their new weekends work out well for them and, and anybody that, that might be affected, right. We're talking about like the Mingo madness or maybe this ASP geo bash. Um, I, I hope that, that it works out well for them. Cause I, I'm, I'm, I have concerns, but I, I hope they do well. So. Yeah. And the, one of the things that I find most interesting about this situation is we will get through this. And this is a moment in time. That's its own little capsule kind of on the order of uh, what many of us experienced with nine 11. Mm-hmm. Very different than nine 11 was, but it's that same kind of world changing event. So we look back in this in five years and we might be laughing at everything we've just said. That's yep. right. Uh, and we might be, you know, like in shock that we were this uh, naive. Right. So it'll be interesting to listen back to this show in five years. And a year from now, the show is going to be absolutely useless to anyone else. <laughs> hopefully in two weeks, this show is useless. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and right. it, hopefully in two weeks, you know, it's like, oh, that was so silly. Every event is back on. We have the uh, vaccine. We have a cure. There's no problem at all. Everyone's back to normal, and the economy is doing well. Well, GSM Times 2 says, fortunately, we're already seeing people getting better in South Korea and other countries where COVID-19 started in January. That's good news. It is good news, uh, and they just reported... Uh, um, this morning that yesterday there were no new cases reported in China or in Yuan uh, province, right? Which is where the epicenter was. So it, it looks like we're getting through this hump, Mm -hmm. but we'll have to see. Exactly. So we'll, we'll, we'll hope that this is the two weeks, three weeks and we're done. But the problem is, We've already been dealing with uh, uh, supply chain problems from China exactly. because of the shutdowns. We're going to have similar problems throughout the world, and it will take us a while to get back and the economy a little bit longer even after that. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. That's right. We don't know, and we don't want to uh, paint uh, too rosy or too bleak a picture either way. <laughs> well, let's you move on, though. Let, let's... It? let's Talk about things that are totally out of this world. Exactly. Let's move on and get out of this uh, uh, depressing and not so uh, positive situation. Get into something that is very interesting, I think. And that is a GPS satellite got a twin to ensure cybersecurity. Wait, just I, a, a real twin, Daryl. A digital twin. Yeah, and this right? this was fascinating. They they took another satellite and replicated. This is the two F satellites. So if I you know there's not a whole lot of uh, detail in the article, but if I read what they're doing correctly, Mm -hmm. they took a two F satellite and made it a copy of another two F satellite. Mm -hmm. So even though they're different satellites, it was digitally saying it was the first one, right? So the whole point is, by doing that, they were able to detect cybersecurity issues. So the satellite itself was in orbit, they said, and they built a digital model and then went looking for the vulnerabilities. And they did the penetration testing that way. How cool is that? That they, is you, so you cool. No, satellites... the. The GPS satellites only send signals down. They don't get anything going up to them to, you know, well, yes, they do. Yeah, there's a lot of control data. And one of the problems is they're talking about uh, all of the blocking, you know, the jamming. Mm-hmm. So we definitely need to have some penetration testing. And this sounds like it's actually a really good way to do it. And probably a lot more accurate than if they just did something on a simulator. So very exactly. cool. Exactly. And then you wanted to tell us about uh, the new GLONASS satellite? Yeah. So a Soyuz 2.1B 
launch vehicle successfully carried a satellite into planned orbit from the hmm, <laughs> Placetic Cos Cosmodrome. I'm saying that that's the exact way you should pronounce it, too. If anybody knows Russian, you can prove me wrong. Until then, I'm right. <laughs> the launch took place <laughs> uh, on schedule Mark 16th. March 16th. This just launched satellite is expected to replace a currently operational GLONASS, GLONASS M satellite, um, one of the 24 healthy satellites. So that's kind of interesting. It's the first K. Wait, yeah. First one of the K1 series to be launched. The others are M series, but that doesn't make sense unless Russian sure. alphabet is not the same well, order. I think. I think what they're saying is this is an M series uh, replacing one of the other M's, but they have the K series and there's only one of the K's currently in order or in, in orbit, but they're talking about the healthy satellites. Yeah. The healthy satellite. You're right. Yeah. So I think this is replacing it. So there's also more news from GPS world saying that GPS data can help warn of rare tsunamis. A few times a century, a medium-sized earthquake causes a large and devastating tsunami. The most recent occurred in 2010 when, the mag when a magnitude 7.8 earthquake off of the Metawani Islands in Indonesia set off a tsunami that was more than 50 feet high in some places, killing 509 people and displacing 15,000. Holy cow. Uh, while rare, these tsunami earthquakes are particularly particularly dangerous because they can hit coastal communities within 5 to 15 minutes before officials can issue a warning. Now, however, using data from GPS receivers and seismographs near the 2010 uh, Matoi event, three seismo seismologists, I'm not going to say their name, <laughs> may have found a way to identify tsunami earthquakes in time to warn people. So this methodology is using data available during and immediately after an earthquake, enables scientists to compare the amount of energy in each earthquake with its magnitude without waiting for their seismic waves to travel to distant measuring stations. Seismologists will be able to use this approach to identify tsunami earthquakes immediately and warn nearby coastal communities before a tsunami wave reaches them. How cool is that? Oh, man. I mean, we're finding all kinds of uses for GPS technology. Exactly. And that, oh, so that just blew cool. my mind. Um, now, there's something here. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. But uh, on a boat's going to have to go figure it out for us. You're going to have to be our roving reporter. Because you're based in Ohio. All right. Well, and I'm thinking this might be a mini vacation for me because it's Ohio. It's not that far. Right down 75. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I'm not sure where Riverside is, so you know. By Dayton. Okay. Right, right down 75. Yeah, so not not quite a day trip, but it's uh, a nice it's, weekend trip, maybe. It's right pad Air Force Base, so yeah. yeah. On April 2nd, a new museum exhibit will open that focuses on the U.S. Air Force role in the management of GPS satellite systems. So it's at uh, 1100 Spates Road Street or Spate Street. Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Riverside, Ohio. Yeah, and this does look interesting from the uh, photos in the uh, article. Yeah, it does. I I, I very badly want to go. So, well, I you, uh, know, you may have to wait just a little bit, but it'll it'll still be there. I was going to say I don't I don't know how that April second date sounds right now. Right. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that April second date is going to hold. Uh huh. But. You know, when this opens, I'm very excited for it. And I, I imagine this was pretty much assembled by the time they made the announcement. Yeah. Who knows? It might even be open already. Yeah. Well, I and closed I, again. I was uh, I was reading through that article because I, I had heard about that. And when I saw when I saw you had that in there, that it looks really cool. Some of the stuff they're going to have there. Uh, so now I can now I can go and actually learn something about uh, GPS technology so that I don't look as silly listening to uh 
your show and calling GPSs and GPSRs, <laughs> getting those mixed up probably, right? Well, GNN or GNSS. And, GNSS together. Yeah, well, and we've, we've been so programmed that everything is uh, GPS. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit uh, confusing still. Yeah. And it's hard for me to learn to say GNSS, Global Navigation. Global Navigation. Something system. Satellite system. Satellite system. Yes, there we go. See? Shoot. I know the letters, but I don't know what they stand for. So yeah, you know, and this this is the problem is you know, it's, change. yeah. Hey, at at this event, there, what I think is cool, they're going to have the opportunity to walk inside an AC one thirty A. That's a uh, Lockheed AC one thirty gunship. Those are the ones with the big guns, you know, that that only go in one uh, one way at a time. You know, go. Let's see, it's sticking out. I don't know if it's a right or left. So it keeps doing circles around the target. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. can put huge amounts of firepower on a target and then fly away. <laughs> it's a uh, heavily armored, long endurance ground attack variant of the C-130 Hercules transport. In case you wanted to know. I, I had a chance to, uh, uh, we, had, we had a air reserve base where I grew up and I had a chance mm -hmm. to check out one of those uh, C-130s that they, they had at the air base there when I was a kid. And that was one of the coolest things that I remember mm -hmm. um, checking that out. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to fly one of these things one day. That didn't pan out, by the way. So. <laughs> you know, those Hercules are such bizarre aircraft. I just absolutely love them. Mm -hmm. And I know most people who go into the Air Force really want to fly the fighters. But when I was actually thinking about it, I was like, that's what I want to fly. <laughs> Those seem really cool. You know? Yep. yep. Uh, Ryan wants to know how long it's supposed to be there. And Ryan, I did not see an end date in that article. I, I think it's actually a going exhibit. Yeah, a permanent exhibit. So we probably have more than the year, but I, I figure I want to try to get to it this year. <clears throat> and we've talked a lot about uh, uh, misconceptions in the last couple of months on this show. So here's another one that I thought would be interesting. Uh, Ian, you want to try to take this one? Uh, we're on the BMW one. Mm -hmm. Yep. The BMW. <laughs> issue. Yep. So um, uh, from core 77 uh, BMW's new logo, uh, it's a visual history of their logo and uh, debunking the myth that it's an airplane propeller. Um, so uh, ask most designers will say it's propeller. Uh, you know, uh, at, at design school, uh, at least one of my professors told us that the Brimmer Rondell represents a stylized propeller since they started out as a manufacturer of aircraft. However, the truth is a little different, explains Fred Jacobs, a uh, man who ought to know. He's the chief archivist of BMW Group Classic, uh, the company's historical branch. Um, as for where the blue and white quadrants came from, those were li originally lifted directly from the flag of Bavaria the region of Germany from which BMW originated as BMW grew and began taking out advertising an unnamed graphic designer transposed the logo with the propeller of an airplane that BMW had created the engine for. Um, so I was reading through this one and uh, BMW has a new logo and they're back to debunk the fact that it's, it's an airplane propeller. Yeah. I, I, th this is one of those. And, I knew this for so long as that's why it's the, uh, uh, you it's know, an airplane propeller. propeller. Yeah. It's an airplane and, propeller who would don't tell me otherwise, but it, yeah, it came <laughs> from motorcycles. Correct. Not from an airplane. Correct. Right. Well, it just so it, happened that they it, happened to make works and the Bavarian flag is blue and white checked. Yeah. So, well, I, but that makes sense, but it's like from they didn't come out and say it that i saw in this article and it, maybe ian you saw it as well but the uh and, and remember all of these links are going to be in the show notes for anyone who mm -hmm. wants to check this stuff out but they didn't come out and say it but the impression that they were trying to leave you with is it was supposed to have been like the spokes or something for the wheels of the motorcycle mm -hmm. and it was it, yeah it was supposed to have something to do it was supposed to be a combination of that and the the bavarian flag it's supposed right. to tie in those colors and and the the spokes, but I, I from yeah that's a great picture there. Um, the the I believe what created this whole 
myth of the airplane propeller was that the artist um, actually created a um, created an image, a, a marketing image for the BMW airplane engines that actually used the logo as the propeller. So it was right. transposed on that image. Like over the prop. Exactly. Yeah. It was the image. Yeah. Yeah. So why would we think otherwise? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> but it's one of those things that's been around so long that everyone just assumed that was truth. Yeah. But yeah. And well, and it fits so well too. Yeah. So yeah, that, I thought that was pretty awesome. What, what I, what I found more interesting looking at those old logos and this is, I'm being real nitpicky originally the colors didn't connect all four corners didn't come mm. together mm -hmm. why <laughs> well because that's where the the hub and the spokes would have been exactly yeah it's a big it's a big conspiracy theory the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> all right <clears throat> one no, last little bit though oh. on that much longer right i i missed that what was that chris I'm sorry and bmw saying no that's not what it is makes this theory go on just that much longer. Absolutely. Yeah, it probably does. Yeah. yeah anyway, uh, we're going to wrap it up with one last little uh, bit of news, which is that SETI at Home has ended its crowdsourced search for alien life after 21 years. That's a real shame. It, it is. Um, and UC Berkeley announced that the project is going to stop on March 31st. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those things I remember doing you know, in you know, like all of those spare compute cycles, when you left your computer on at work and you never did it, hey, let's set up the SETI at home screensaver. And it was awesome. <laughs> it was like, hey, it's all these extra compute cycles that now, you know, we, we don't have to go to waste. It's it's actually doing something. Wasn't that a great idea? Yeah. Well, it's folding at home still does exist. Right. And that was one of the things that, uh, uh, people said that you should do to help the uh, COVID-19 research because mm. they were actually running the uh, COVID-19 research through folding at home. Interesting. So, there is still some of this stuff happening, but SETI is shutting down. SETI at home is shutting down. It's, it's kind of sad. It's, and I, I don't know that it means anything, but I kind of want to read it as, yeah, we couldn't find anything out there. Yeah. After 21 years of searching, we gave ET it hasn't phoned home. <laughs> I I was uh, I was reading through this one a little bit because this one uh, I was I was on Engadget the other day. And I saw this, um, really interesting. But uh, they they kind of talked about it as a hibernation and talked about uh, they're gonna sift through the data they have. They have tons and mounds and masses of data. Um, so now it's time to process it, right? So. Who knows? There well, may be, to think, ET might be out there, Daryl. It, it might be. And I have to think that at this point, there's probably better ways to do this with uh, a lot of the newer AI platforms. This is a 21-year-old technology that's kept going for that long. What are the chances it's actually going to work as well as just, you know, buying some processor time on some AI system and just doing it? If Watson can't find aliens, I mean, who can? <laughs> <laughs> well we've got all of the uh, google cloud and uh um oh i can't remember the other big one that was doing the ai stuff uh shoot Microsoft. Uh, you know Mike, yeah but what is it called azure is it azure ai that doesn't sound right i don't think that's right no but there's all of these ai systems that you can rent very inexpensively some of it's actually even free if you're doing the open data sense. So <laughs> Roger <laughs> says the aliens yeah. made them stop. <laughs> um, Azure is the uh, Microsoft AI platform. If that's what you're going for. <clears throat> what was it called again? Azure. It is that's just Azure. Azure. Uh, I just came up with, well, there is Azure AI. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just wasn't sounding right. So yeah, Microsoft Azure is what it's called. Yeah, and, and uh, NASA had some um, stuff that they were doing as well for a while that was free. So there's a bunch of these uh, uh, tools that are out there that I think are probably just better, and that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, on a boat, thanks so much for uh, joining us and giving us a little bit of insight on uh, especially the uh, mega events. Tell us again how to find more about uh, Midwest Geobash. Sure. Uh, website is uh, mwgb.org. <laughs> mwgb.org or midwestgeobash.org. Um, or you can check out our event page at that GC number right there. So, yeah, GC, GC Golf eight, Chart 88 eight, eight, QKK. It's hard to read in that camera. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that's really interesting about uh, Midwest Geobash is there's a theme involving a bird every year. You want to give us a little bit of insight as to what that is? Uh, yeah. So, this year uh, we're doing a. Uh, what was this? curtain in the way come on now we're doing a uh, <laughs> a uh, golden golden cash theme uh it's a, a spy theme um hence the james bond looking thing here so okay. um so this is this is our mascot uh it's actually a pigeon this is his uh, silhouette version um but every year we we have a, a theme we, we we have campsite decorations all kinds of stuff like that so uh golden cash spies that's our theme this year so it should be should be a good time Nice. Thanks so, for the plug. I appreciate it there. Midwest Geobash has gone to the birds. It, oh, it's it does been, every year. For the, it's for the birds <laughs> for many years, yes. <laughs> no, it, it is a great uh, event. It's different than most of the others that I've run into, which is what I love about Megas is there's very few that are the same. Yeah, but right. it is very much about uh, uh, socializing and the camping. And I, I've yet to go overnight and it's one of those things that hopefully this year i'm going to be able to do since i can't do the yeah. one i wanted to do out in the west coast anyway yeah the uh the social distancing thing doesn't work out too well with midwest geobash so no, definitely not <laughs> gotta keep the campsite six feet apart yeah the health the health department makes sure of that anyway so <laughs> All right. Thanks again. And right. I'll, I'll see you there if we don't catch up first. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me. It's a great time. No problem. Now, if you want to know more about the geo gearheads, make sure you check out the cash website at cash for more on the geo gearheads, including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners. So leave us feedback by emailing geo gearheads at cash or through the many channels of social media. Your support helps keep the Cashamaniac shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on our website to support the Cashamaniac shows. Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Umfenauer and Daryl Wattenberg. The show's copyright 2020 by Daryl Wattenberg. All rights reserved. Cash with the Cashamaniacs.